I am completely different from the other speakers because, speakers because I'm an art idiot. And my wife, who is an amazing artist, forgives me for a great many of the things that I say about the world of art. And this is largely because my background is in how we perceive the world and how we actually build the world. And one of the things you have to realize is that everything you sense is a lie. And if you want to be gentle about it, you can say it's an interpretation. Because the world around you, the color of the light, the brightness, the shadow, the sound of the air conditioner, the feel of the seat against your butt, is an interpretation. The physics is what creates the structure, creates the color of the light, creates the, the vibrations of the sound. But you have to interpret all this. Your brain is a pattern-seeking machine that seeks to interpret what's going on and takes the physics and remaps it onto your brain to call what we call psychophysics, which is just the mapping of the reality onto the psychological internal state. This mapping is extraordinarily complicated. What's interesting is that it doesn't matter how small the animal is. If it has a brain, it has to do this. Whether you're talking about a tiny little fish or you're talking about a human being or you're talking about a blue whale, we all map the world in an interpretive sense. And the problem with interpretation is that there's a lot of there's a lot of flexibility in how we take the physics and turn it into our eternal reality and how we respond to it. And one of the things that I've realized over the years is that your eyes lie to you a lot. The reason that we see all these illusions is that there's no place in the human brain you can't get a visual response. When you see something, to actually recognize it, the fastest you can see something and recognize it is about a quarter of a second. It's more likely that you see and recognize something, whether it's a face or a scene, at the same rate at which you think, which is approximately one thought per second. And this is, has some benefits, because if we could see really fast, we'd have a lot of problem with movies. We'd see a bunch of still images. But the fact that we don't see very fast means that 20 frames per second, and it looks like a, a moving scene. So vision because we're visual creatures and we map psycho psychoacoustically slowly, our eyes are easy to trick. And yet, not all our senses are so trickable. This is an equivalent map of hearing. Hearing goes to the same number of places as vision, but it's much more discreet. Hearing is the express train. Hearing is getting on the West Side Highway at 1 o'clock in the morning, and there's no one on the road. It still takes you where you want to go. But you actually hear things tens to hundreds of times faster, and you don't need a lot of brain to hear. But there's a problem with this. We don't pay attention to hearing very often. You don't pay attention to sound. Sound drives your attention to other things. There are over 12,000 categorized optical illusions, and you've probably seen most of them. They're great fun toys. There are about 10 auditory illusions, and most of them are not very interesting. The only one that I could find which does not require 10 minutes of mathematical explanation is this one called Shepherd Tones, which is actually kind of cool. <laughs> It's the audio equivalent of a never-ending staircase. It requires a computer to set this up. There is nowhere in nature that can manipulate five harmonic overtones with a mathematical precision in order to be able to trick your ears, because your ears are working hundreds of times faster than your eyes. So you just heard the only auditory illusion that doesn't require a PhD to understand. <laughs> this one. I'm going to show you an interesting trick. Steve, can you play the first sound, the segment? It's just a cocktail party. OK, you've been there. You've been in these noisy rooms. You've been in a restaurant. You can, can't hear your partner. And now, Steve, could you play the second one? Okay. 
Okay, what'd you hear? Paolo. Your ears can pick things out of noise fields that no computer can pick out, or at least no computer you're going to get without military access or really big grants. The names were embedded very, very low level. And usually people can hear their own names, but you can hear anything that's at all relevant. You will pick information out of crowded noise because your ears are operating faster than any other system. And not only that, your brain is constantly rewiring itself, physically. Everything you hear, everything you see, physically changes how your brain is organized. So if you hear your name and you're a little kid, it's like, your name is Bobby. Ah, Bobby. You hear it over and over. Your brain starts rewiring so that nerves that pick up the B sound connect. So that the next time you hear a B, it's faster. And the A ah will get added. Your brain will physically rewire so that things that are familiar, things that are important, or things that are relevant will pop out of the background. And the only sensory modality that this works consistently for is hearing. The difference between listening and hearing is adding attention. Adding attention brings entirely new pathways of your brain in and lets you focus down on things. And one of the things that I've been working with this auditory think tank is the way that since sound is so fast and so discreet, it can get underneath your cognitive radar. You don't have to see something, read it, and study it. Sound can be used as a conduit, the way a carrier signal is used in radio, to get information to almost every part of your brain, if you understand how the brain works. This is why there are tools out there that we've, we've helped develop that lets you convince your brain that you're being rocked to sleep and just use sound to induce normal sleep. By tricking the hearing part of your brain into sending a signal to the sleep centers of your brain that makes your brain think you're rocking back and forth. Sound is both the distractor, but sound can also be the shield around you. This is why some people put on music to block out the environment, put on sound to block transient sounds that might wake them up. You can use sound as a neural structure to focus your attention and to block out the rest of the world. So when you think of focus and you think of distraction, they're attentional mechanisms. They're not visually driven. Vision is your final cue. But sound is one of the things that guides your brain to your visual tasks. And that's it.